then again, after they moved down and they lived on a rented farm, and as we knew it, was the wise place, and some of you younger people will know it as the Battle Aircon. Tragedy struck again. Uh, they contacted Scarlet Fever and were quarantined, and even people made a wide circle when they went by the gate. This is and in uh, 1904, that was, and Catherine died. She was a little crippled girl. She died with Scarlet Fever and made quarantine. They could not have a public funeral. The only, they took her out at night and buried her in the Wagner Cemetery, which was 10 miles from there. When they got home the next day with the horses and wagons, uh, little Richard was dead. So the next night, they took him out and buried her. And those were moonlight nights. The day Mother died, she never wanted to see a home at night. So they had their tragedy. Well, then there was another son born that lived. And then there were two more. One lived about a year and a half, and the other one died at birth. And uh, for some unknown reason, they were both baptized Josephs. And that was a tragedy again. And then the next tragedy struck when their youngest child was born, and he stands here before you. <laughs> Well, history has a way of repeating itself. 
to refresh our memories, our first reunion was held at the George Cobalt Farm, and the second reunion at the Ville Lions Farm in the Yankee Farm, one year later. Well, 36 years later, I hesitate to make a report on the first reunion, as many of the family are not with us any longer. The Ville Lions Band added much enjoyment and still with us, and I think they would enjoy a repeat on the second reunion. So I had written it into a rhyme, so I'll read that now to you. Well, it was agreed to set a day aside each year for a family to get together with the ones we hold much dear. All the kin folks were invited, regardless where they roamed, on the second Sunday of August at the Bill Lines family home. Well, winter passed and the season barely flew. Alfalfa Bay sailed corn laid by, and the first thing we knew, the day of the month of the reunion was here, the one we had looked forward to for almost a year. Well, the road to beach the Yankin is a truly lovely drive. I think that we were the last ones to arrive. Bill Lyons, the yard was lined with cars clear down to the bottom. So we knew the Roaring Lions had taken over to the Bill Lyons farm. There were cousins here and cousins there and cousins, cousins everywhere. One each was greeted and received a written name, with the no interviews didn't know from whence they came. There was a small table set up in the chairs out on the lovely green, and a big long table was more food than we had ever seen. Well, the table was arranged in picnic style, very much at seven, and Bill rang his dinner bell and hollered, come and get it. <laughs> well, anyway, needless to say, the next hour was happily spent with wonder, wonderful food, visiting and enjoying America. But then we took a walk down the shady lake, arm and arm, until we could came to a little schoolhouse on the corner of the farm. It uh, brought back memories of childhood days of yore. We were so many and so much to stand. So so many, some had to stand in the door. They put the desks close together where they used to sit with ease. Some were couldn't make it and others had to squeak. <laughs> well, loving pictures were shown, moving pictures were shown of relatives at the coast, and then we had group singing. The part we enjoyed the most was the uh, Lions Orchestra and the reading and the jokes. Well, everyone was so happy and everyone was gay, but I can hardly remember what all took place that day. Now, Lions Harry Finley Harris was from the farthest away, and Margaret Bowman Moira was the best surprise of the day. Well, we'll get back to our other story now. Let's see, yes, Margaret Coughlin and myself are the last ones left of that generation. Margaret, uh, but we have today with us to represent that Bill Lyons' or Bill Coughlin's granddaughter, Betty Bowman from Wakanda. Collecting, as he put it, stuff regarding the history 
a descent by his family, he was waiting, mailing it to me. Well, in just a few days, the mail man delivered a large envelope <coughs> and a bill called stuff. Well, it was the complete history of the Lyons family, Jerry and Ellen, Lily, and the long waiting trip to the promised land of America, from Chicago, Kansas, Highway, and on to South Dakota. They finally settled in Lake County. You will just have to read the history. So complete and interesting. I called him Sunday, and I was at a loss to find words to tell him how much I enjoyed it. So much work and such a research on all members of the family up to date of the 1986, only which it could be made into a book form and handed down to the next generation. Well, now let's see if I have anything else there. Well, an old man strolling on the highway came in the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide. The old man crossed to the other side, and he paused for me to straight on the other side, and he dealt with his gracious on the side. Now, why should a lonely traveler here? Do you be able to waste your time by building here? Your journey will end with the close of the day, and never again may you pass this way. But the old man replied, This journey, which hath been not to me, to a fair haired youth, may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. My friend, I have built a bridge for him. And that goes for Jerry and Elmine. They built many, many bridges down to the generation, and which we now enjoy, and a subcluster build more bridges. Well, I'll just say one more thing. Old age is golden, I've heard it said, but each night when I crawl into bed with my ears in the drawer and my teeth in the cup <laughs> and my eyes on the glass on the dresser until I wake up, I pause for a moment and I say to myself, now is there anything else I should put on the shelf? <laughs> one of the most 